Our next question is question number 50. Which property of collide is not dependent on the charge on colloidal particles and options are coagulation, electrophoresis, electroosmosis and Tyndall effect. As we know colloidal particle it means dispersed phase is always charged. The charge may be positive charge or it may be negative charge. Now suppose I am taking a colloidal solution in which dispersed phase is positively charged. So now we can relate these options. The first option is given coagulation. Coagulation it means conversion of colloidal solution into precipitate and that conversion is due to neutralization of charge. So particle charge is essential for coagulation. The second option is given electrophoresis. The movement of particles of dispersed phase towards respective electrodes when placed in electric field is known as electrophoresis. It means according to the charge of dispersed phase particle they will move towards cathode or anode. So here again charge is essential. Third option is electroosmosis. When a colloidal solution is placed in electric field, here we are using electric field. So charge is required and charge will play a major role where the particles are moving. The fourth option is Tyndall effect. Tyndall effect is a scattering of light. This is the property of dispersed phase. When they absorb light, they diffract it and they scatter it in all the direction. So this is the property where charge is not required. It means the correct answer should be the option number four, Tyndall effect. Our next question is question number 51. Which of the following salts will give highest pH in water and options are first option KCl, second option NaCl, third option sodium carbonate, fourth option copper sulfate. Now see in this question when salt is dissolved in water what will be the nature of solution or what will be the pH of solution it depends upon hydrolysis. The first option is given here KCl. As we know KCl is a salt of a strong acid and a strong base which do not hydrolyze in aqueous medium. So this solution will remain neutral and pH of a neutral solution will be 7. Second option is given NaCl. NaCl is also a salt of a strong acid and a strong base. So aqueous solution will remain neutral. It means pH will be 7. The third option is given sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate when dissolved in water it hydrolyzes, giving a strong base NaOH and weak acid carbonic acid. Since here base is a strong base and acid is weak acid so nature of base will dominate resulting a basic solution so pH will be more than 7. The fourth option is given copper sulfate. Copper sulfate also hydrolyzes in water giving CuOH hold twice plus H2SO4. Here this copper hydroxide is a weak base while sulfuric acid is a strong acid. So nature of acid will dominate and solution will become acidic solution having pH less than 7. So according to this question the data given the highest pH will be observed for sodium carbonate solution. It means the option third will be correct option. So next question is question number 52. Of the following 0.1 molar aqueous solution, which one will exhibit the largest freezing point depression? Now as you know, freezing point depression is delta Tf. And this depression in freezing point is a colligative property. So for delta Tf, we will write I 
into Kf into molality. For all these solution, the value of Kf will remain same. For all the given solution, molality will remain same. It means depression in freezing point will depend upon Wenthoff factor I. So here we have to check the value of I. First option is given KCl. As you know, KCl is a strong electrolyte which completely ionizes in the aqueous medium. So in this case, the Wenthoff factor I will be equal to 2. Second option is given C6H12O6. It may be glucose, it may be fructose, but this compound is non-electrolyte. A non-electrolyte does not ionizes or associated in aqueous medium. So their Wenthoff factor I is taken as 1. The third option is given a salt which is aluminium sulfate. Aluminium sulfate being a salt, this is also a strong electrolyte producing two aluminium ion and three sulfate ion. It means total number of ions, total number of particles present in the solution is 5. So here Wenthoff factor I will be considered as 5. The fourth option is given K2SO4 which also dissociates in aqueous medium producing two potassium ion and one sulfate ion. So number of particle will be taken as 3 and Wenthoff factor for this salt solution will be taken as 3. Now in all these four options we can see that maximum number of particles are present in aluminium sulphate. So when tau factor I is maximum for aluminium sulphate it means value of delta Tf will be also maximum for aluminium sulphate. So the correct answer is option number 3 aluminium sulphate. So our next question is question number 53. When 22.4 liters of hydrogen gas is mixed with 11.2 liter of chlorine gas each at STP, the moles of HCl formed is equal to. Now in this question as we know hydrogen and chlorine both of them are reacting gases. It means we need to apply the chemical stoichiometry. So first of all we will write the equation H2 plus Cl2 reaction product is HCl. Hydrogen is a gas, chlorine is also gas, hydrogen chloride is also gas. Now according to the balanced chemical equation, 1 mole hydrogen when reacts with 1 mole chlorine, the reaction product is 2 mole hydrogen chloride. But in this question, the given amount of hydrogen is 22.4 liter. So 22.4 liter, it means 1 mole hydrogen is given. Why chlorine is given 11.2 liter at STP. So 11.2 liter it means only half mole chlorine is given. So according to this given equation amount of chlorine is less than required amount. So we can consider chlorine as limiting reagent. And as you know, limiting reagent will decide the quantity of product. So balance equation K according, if 1 mole chlorine completely reacts with hydrogen, then product is 2 mole HCl. Here only half mole of chlorine is consumed. So reaction product will form 1 mole HCl. So the correct answer should be 1 mole HCl and 1 mole HCl is given in for first option. So our correct answer is first option 1 mole HCl.
So our next question is question number 54. When 0.1 mole MnO4 2 negative is oxidized, the quantity of electricity required to completely oxidize MnO4 2 negative to MnO4 negative is. And the options given are first option 96500 coulomb, second option 2 into 96500 coulomb, third option is 9650 coulomb, fourth option is 96.50 coulomb. Now in this question MnO4 2 negative that is per magnet ion oxidizes to MnO4 negative. In MnO4 2 negative, oxidation state of manganese is plus 6, while in MnO4 negative, oxidation state of manganese is plus 7. So we can say 1 mole MnO4 2 negative when completely oxidizes, it will release 1 mole electron. And charge carried by 1 mole electron is 96500 coulomb. But in this question, it is asked that when 0.1 mole KMnO4 is or MnO4 2 negative is oxidized, the quantity of electricity required will be. So here we can see if 1 mole MnO4 negative completely oxidizes coulombs required are 96500 coulomb it means 1.1 mole mno4 2 negative will oxidize the charge or coulomb required will be 9650 coulombs. It means the correct option should be option number 3 which is 9650 coulombs.